And here, what we see is uh, we're probably from the scalp or maybe the face, somewhere with large, multiple large hair follicles. But these hair follicles have an, an abnormality. They do not look normal. They are distended and enlarged, and their epithelium is, is expanded and much more pale. And when we look closer, the reason for that is that there's abundant mucin within the hair follicle epithelium. We see mucin filling up the lumen of the hair follicle and also infiltrating in between individual keratinocytes of the follicular epithelium. And sometimes it's obvious blue mucin. Sometimes it, it washes out and looks a little more spongy. So if I see hair follicles that are really distended and look pale and spongiotic, sometimes I'll maybe do a mucin stain or look closer for mucin because I've noticed sometimes it doesn't, the mucin can wash out a little bit. But most of the time when I've seen this, it, it looks obviously blue at closer look. So multiple follicles are involved. Look at this follicle here, this one here, this one here. So the follicle epithelium is expanded by mucin. And there's also a lot of lymphocytes scattered in the follicle epithelium and around the follicle. So this is called follicular mucinosis. And this is an important disease to know about because it is associated, at least in some cases, with mycosis fungoides, uh, particularly the folliculotropic variant of mycosis fungoides. Now, there is some debate over whether all cases are associated with mycosis fungoides. I have heard some dermatopathologists say that they believe all follicular mucinosis is a variant of mycosis fungoides. I have heard others say that that's not true, and I tend to side with the latter point, that I've seen some cases that did not seem to have um, it had, the, the patients that had it for a long time and didn't seem to have any progressive disease or other signs of mycosis fungoides. And um, so at least some books have said that there's kind of a couple different patterns. Number one, you can see follicular mucinosis associated with uh, mycosis fungoides, particularly folliculotropic MF, in which the mycosis fungoides, which is a variant, for anyone who's a beginner, it's a variant of, uh, of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Okay, most often, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, um, uh, mycosis fungoides, is um, clonal T-cells that infiltrate the epidermis and have epidermotropism, but sometimes they can infiltrate the hair follicle epithelium or surround hair follicles, and they may do that by, uh, with the coexistence of epidermal involvement. So you can have both epidermal involvement and follicular involvement by mycosis fungoides, T-cell lymphoma. Other cases tend to just have hair follicle involvement for some reason. Okay, and, um, and those are important to know about because they can be harder to diagnose clinically because they don't look like other forms of MF clinically. They can also be harder to diagnose microscopically because if you get a case that's very only involving focal follicles, you may not see it until you cut deeper into the block. I've seen cases that just had little pinpoint papules clinically and on initial section there was nothing and then deepers, it was folliculotropic mycosis fungoides, okay? So in any case, I've got another video about that you can go watch that has a better example and goes into more depth about uh, follicular tropic MF. But mycosis fungoides, is, it's a complicated topic, um, uh, even complicated to me still as a dermatopathologist. So in any case, some cases of mute follicular mucinosis are associated with MF. I find it challenging to tell apart uh, MF in the background of follicular mucinosis. Sometimes, like in a case like this, we have increased lymphocytes they're not very atypical. So in a case like this, we could do immunostains to try to see if these were, you know, all CD4 positive or all CD8 positive, or if they had loss of CD5 or CD7. I find that those stains are often challenging to interpret, uh, particularly in more subtle cases of MF. You can also do uh, T cell receptor clonality studies to see if this is a monoclonal T cell process. <clears throat> those are also imperfect because some cases of MF, especially earlier stage uh, cases, will have false negative T-cell receptor analysis. And also sometimes you can have clonality in follicular mucinosis that doesn't progress. So again, it's really complicated and it's kind of um, an area of some, some degree of controversy. And I am not a hematopathology expert. You can go and read the writings of those people who know much more about it than I do. Uh, but in any case, one form of uh, uh, follicular mucinosis is associated with follicular tropic MF. But some people have proposed that there are at least two other scenarios you can see it. One is... Um, you can see it as a reactive phenomenon associated with other other types of dermatosis, like inflammatory conditions. And then three, that you can see as an incidental phenomenon that is idiopathic and does not progress on to have mycosis fungoides. So I don't know for sure, um, but I've, I've heard that it proposed that those are three potential scenarios. I do think that if you see this in multiple follicles, and that it's at least worth looking into the clinical scenario to consider if, um, if this patient might have 
a need for more workup to rule out mycosis fungoides. And also, if you start seeing a lot of lymphocytes with it, you may want to consider doing immunostains or T-cell receptor clonality studies or consultation with a dermatopathologist who has some experience with hematopathology to see if they think that there could be potential for mycosis fungoides here. In any case, this pattern right here, follicular mucinosis, and um, you can then go read and consider what other workup might need done. All right.